And now, a first look at the limited series, The Mysterious Death of Easy e Y'all kick it. Easy-E has died after a battle with AIDS. He was first admitted to a Los Angeles hospital a month ago. He never even knew he was HIV positive. I have never believed that my father died of full-blown AIDS. I have always believed that something else happened, and I'm afraid of what that might be. He died unusually fast. None of his children had it. None of the baby mothers had it. He was certainly a non-drug user, except smoking a joint now and then. My father was isolated in the hospital. There was no autopsy done. I've never even seen the medical records. Why? For many years, my mom and I have been fighting to know exactly what happened. This was my best friend. We have a child together, and all these questions have been living inside of me for more than 25 years. There's so many conspiracy theories out there. People said Jerry Heller killed him. The last conversation that I had with E was stay away from Jerry Heller. Some people said Suge Knight killed him. People were saying the government was involved. Are you the feds? You watching us, huh? I just heard so many things throughout the years. As young as I was, I was like, something just don't add up. I think it's a conspiracy involved. What is or isn't the truth? He was getting death threats. And being his daughter, why do I not have the answers to anything about my own father's death? It's a mystery, you know? To truly understand my father's impact on the world, we need to go back to when it all began, to the world's most dangerous group, and the musical revolution he spearheaded that would earn him the title, the godfather of gangster rap. Gangster rap, that's the explicitly profane and violent music of black and white artists. The group N.W.A. is the most in-your-face of the gangster rap styles, but they deny that their music incites riots or violence. When N.W.A. came, it was so off the chain. I remember the first song I heard. I'm like, what's that, man? I mean, this is a group called N.W.A. Well, what the hell that stand for? <laughs> with an attitude. How the hell they get away with that? <laughs> you know, I don't know, but this is it. When N.W.A. came, they stepped over me like Godzilla. When that Straight Outta Compton album came out, I was like, damn. I was there from the beginning of the 1989 NWA Easy e tour, and it was incredible, because NWA was kind of like a super group that kind of came out of nowhere. And like the first group, street reporters, and telling what was really happening in the hood. We make our records based on stuff that's happening where we live, you know? Killing, thieving, dope dealing. Everything you hear on our records, it's true. Easy e and N.W.A., they were giving a real message about issues that were going on in a place that nobody even gave a damn about. The gang culture, police brutality. Like, we got a real controversial song coming out called F*** the Police. What is that? Talk about self-explanatory. The police coming straight from the underground. A young got it back because I'm brown. Nobody says the police. I mean, people say it, but, you know, you don't hear that on a record. But these guys live that. Man, they got beat down all the time. And so when people heard it coming from these guys, it was kind of a revolutionary song. And that was kind of like the pot boiling over. But the thing of it is, is if you're gonna talk this gangster rap, you gotta be authentic to that life, straight up. And Easy was super authentic. See, if you look back at me, my beginning come from the concrete. Most of my friends are either dead or in jail. Eric was the streets. He was in the... It becomes unbelievable without him in it. Oh, yeah. He wasn't no bitch, dog. He was a tough mother... You put the dot on your target, and you blow the... Out the but Easy e the rapper, was only a small part of who my father truly was. I may have only been four years old when he passed away, but we spent so much time together. I have so many strong memories of my dad, from his smile to his hugs, his warmth, his humor. So for me, this journey is not just about learning how he died, but also to show the world the man that he truly was and all that he made possible for so many other people. 
I feel like a lot of my father's accomplishments have been overshadowed by his death, but I'm hoping that once we get to the bottom of this, he can finally be highlighted in the way that he deserves. When it came down to doing this investigation, we did feel like we should involve a journalist. We do need somebody who doesn't have the emotional attachment, who really will just present the facts. And my mom and I was like, you know what? What about Jasmine? Can't wait to connect to you guys. It's been a long time. Right. I, know. I know. Jasmine Simpkins is a journalist who actually interviewed me back when the movie Straight Outta Compton came out. I've been in full support of the movie in general. What I was tweeting about was, you know, there's a lot of the things that they didn't touch on my dad's own story. Not too many people know that there is more to my father's story. She was really intrigued by the story and we really built like a connection. You're over there at this space, right? Yeah, I'm already putting things up on the board. I got all kinds of set articles, photos, anything I could find pertaining to Easy's death. I've been working as a journalist for more than a decade now. I contribute for CNN, HLN, Fox. I've covered some pretty high profile celebrity stories. I covered Whitney Houston's death. I was at the Beverly Hilton on the night that she passed away. And more recently, Nipsey Hussle's death. A manhunt is currently underway, and police tell us that this is an all hands on deck situation. Easy's death is multi layered. There's a lot of theories, and I really have a pet peeve for false information. Well, hello there. Hi. My responsibility is really to give people the entire picture, and I hope by doing that that people can move on and heal. I'm so happy that you guys asked me to participate, you know, know. on this journey with you. I call it a journey because I feel like oh, that's it's definitely for you. Definitely is. Yeah. For sure. There's still so many questions that you guys deserve to have an answer to. Yes. And then fans, I point to myself, we deserve to have an answer to that, right? Like Yeah. I mean, for me, obviously I was there and this journey really started right upon his death. Yeah. A big part of this journey has to do with my mother's fight and passion. She and my father, they had such an incredible relationship. They just went through so much together. They were really best friends. And she did a lot for him in his personal life. She did a lot for him in his business. Tracy was his uh, his ears, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She was the secret weapon. You know, she brought Rhythm D to the table. Rhythm D produced Real Compton City G's, which was a huge part of my father's comeback after Dre had left the label. Yeah, man. Tracy, she introduced him to me. And she was like, he needs you. You know what I'm saying? He needed a hit record. And uh, history was made because of that. I had met Eric in January 1989. And he and I were together six years. It sounds crazy, but you know, I was always like trying to protect him. You know, I just wanted him to know that I had his back and I was there for him. And that's why even now, I feel like I owe it to him to get to the bottom of this. He was my first love, and I just feel like I need to still fight for him and try to find justice no matter what. I do think before we even get to the conspiracies and all the other theories surrounding his death, the first thing we should deal with is if he really had AIDS. So many people question if he had it. He says he has no idea how he got the fatal disease. So many people said that he looked so normal. He didn't look like he was dying. Every person I know died with AIDS just disintegrated before they died. Easy e didn't do that. And again, it happened so quickly. Yeah. For me, 25 years later, I still have not seen any medical records that literally have shown me my father did have AIDS. So it is still a big question for us. My whole life, I spent a lot of time around people who were extremely close to my father, and almost no one believed that my father died of full-blown AIDS. I think the best way to try to get to the bottom of all this is to go talk to these people. So we're going to talk to BG Knockout. 
He's a rapper who was signed to my father's record label. He's been very vocal with the fact that he does not believe that my father had it. I was in the studio with E the day his lungs collapsed. Nine days later he died, I said I'm done with rap. Back in my big homie went out, he didn't deserve it. Tried to say he died of AIDS, but easy was cold murder. I really just want to get some insight as to why he's so adamant about it. Why does he feel so strongly that my father absolutely did not have it? We have been trying to find answers to questions that have gone unanswered for 25 years. Right. And just really excited to talk to people like you, you know, Definitely. people that really knew my father, you know what I mean? And, and, right. and do have opinions just about how he died, why he died so quickly, because right. you were around and you, you knew him well enough to see that it, something wasn't right. Absolutely. I was with him on a daily basis, and there are some things y'all definitely should know. The Mysterious Death of Eazy-E, the limited series, premieres Thursday, August 12th on WeTV.